Hello, I am Lux. And this is Ember. And this is our random thoughts and theories on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Oh, why don't you start us off? Because you do more theorizing than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a oh, random thought and theory I came up with recently. Do alicorns need sleep? It just kind of struck me that wouldn't Celestia had to have done the moon and the sun? So wouldn't she have pretty much been up 24-7 taking care of both the night and the day? Or did she like... Ha this is just popping in my head right now. Or she just like put the sun, uh, put the sun down for the night, raise the moon, and then sleep, and then set an alarm, wake up at what would be dawn, and then lower the sun and raise the moon. Because do you really have to do anything at night, or do you just have to move those and go to sleep, and then wake up at the appropriate time the next day? Well, the sun and the moon both visually appear to move in the real world, and you do have dawn, noon, afternoon, dusk in the day, and you have moonrise and moonset in the night, but we clearly see Celestia doing other activities during the day. So it doesn't look like once the sun is up, she actually actively needs to control it. One of the questions would be, okay, does she just have to do sunrise and sunset and it's on its own magic? Or is she actually maintaining it like in the back of her mind all day? And if she does have to actively maintain it, then yeah, when did she sleep? Mm-hmm. So if, let's just say she didn't sleep. So does that mean alicorns don't need sleep? Because that was a thousand years of doing that. And if so, does that make it so Cadence and Twilight have this ability to not sleep? They just don't realize it because, you know, being regular ponies beforehand, they are used to a normal sleep cycle. Or are they a different grade of alicorn than the two sisters? Because looking at the journal of the two sisters, which is canon until the show contradicts it, the alicorns are described as being a mixture of all three pony attributes, earth pony, pegasi, and unicorn. But Cadence and Twilight are only composed of two components, their original component and the component that was added when they ascended to Princess. Yeah, or also known in the fandom as Ascended Alicorns, because people have that have had that theory for a while that Luna and Celestia are, you know, born alicorns, and Twilight and Cadence are Ascended Alicorns. Well, the Journal of the Two Sisters holds out to that theory because Reading that, it sounds as though Luna and Celestia are, were both born as alicorns. Mm -hmm. And um, that alicorns are actually, in a way, a separate race because they mention like there's other ones other than Celestia and Luna, or there used to be at one point. Mm -hmm. And they also mention a slower aging process. So it's implied extremely long lived, not necessarily immortal. Mm. Though, if that's the case, what on earth is going to happen to the sun and moon when and if Celestia and Luna ever pass on? That's also explained in the Journal of the Two Sisters. Once Celestia and Luna eventually age in that way, it would just be taken over by um, a bunch of unicorns. But if I remember correctly, it sounds like when you do that, eventually the unicorns lose their magic because it takes so much magic to move the celestial bodies. Which is why they wanted the alicorns to take it over, because the alicorns had so much more magic. Because what happened in the Journal of the Two Sisters is all of the unicorns capable of performing the spell ran out of magic. So there was no one to lower the moon and raise the sun. Hmm. Though that does bring up the idea that just hit me is that might also explain why Celestia seems to be getting, like, weaker over time as we see in the series you mean like how she doesn't beat anyone ever yeah she actually seems stronger near the beginning of this series and as things go on i know it's probably just writing but it, that might be a good explanation if they ever say it that um even over time alicorns lose their magic having to use as much as they do to raise lower the sun and moon but if that's the case, you would think that Celestia would be at her weakest at the beginning of the series when she's been raising the sun and lowering the moon for a thousand years. Because once we have the finale of the pilot, Luna 
takes over her duties again, which means that Celestia is spending half the magic that she was previously. So even if Celestia has been weakened by a thousand years of using excess magic, she's using less magic now, so you would think that if there was a degradation, it would be much less at this point since she's using less magic. Yeah, but also saying she's probably actually weaker at the beginning of the series than when than she was when she fought her sister. And that may be the reason that she was out of commission at the beginning of the series as well. Her sister was easily able to overpower her because she was basically resting in the moon the entire time. So Celestia was actually weaker when Nightmare Moon came back than... Than she was when she sealed Nightmare Moon originally. Mm -hmm. And this also theoretically means that Luna might actually be more powerful at this point because she used her powers for a thousand years less. Interesting things to think on. Yeah. And another thing from that book is how freaking powerful Star Wars World actually is. <laughs> yeah. Because if I remember correctly in the book, it also states that he did the moon raising and lowering by himself, or at least he was the main focus of the energy for the group of unicorns for a period of time. Yeah, and that brings me back to one of my theories that ties back to the Journal of the Two Sisters and the series. Going back to the episode where Cadence and Twilight go to the Star Swirl of the Bearded um, exhibits. Based on comments in the Journal of the Two Sisters, I say Star Swirl was actually present at that point. Because if he was, he would have seen that there were two other Alicorn princesses. There's even a hint that he specifically saw Twilight in the Journal of the Two Sisters as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the emblem that he references, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Star Swirl, there's something that's very interesting that happens at the beginning of Rainbow Rocks. It's actually stated that the sirens in that movie were actually sent there by Star Swirl the Bearded. He did it by creating a portal to a different dimension, which is the dimension that the human world resides in. And people seem to have trouble with this. And I'm like, well, if you read the Journal of the Two Sisters, you find out he does this a lot. <laughs> he does a lot. He messes around a lot with dimensions and time travel. So it's quite easy that he would send creatures to a different dimension to get them out of Equestria, especially if he knows the other dimension doesn't have as much magic. Yeah, both the Nightmare Night episode of the TV series and the Journal of the Two Sisters have a lot of support for Star Swirl the Bearded creating and executing a large number and a wide variety of spells. And it shows that he is becoming more and more of a key character, but I think he's also becoming the series fallback when they have to explain something. They're like, well, this is a cool idea. Who's going to explain it? Oh, I know! Star Swirl! <laughs> he made it! Yeah, that explains it. Yeah, it's like that old fallback. A wizard did it. Because, <laughs> gee, what's Star Swirl the bearded? A wizard! <laughs> I mean, you even have the hat and the cloak. Yeah, he's like their world version of Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was bad. So I guess that makes the twice after the Excalibur. I mean, <laughs> mm, I don't know. I would think the elements of harmony would be Excalibur since mm -hmm. they're the most powerful. I was making a bad joke there. Ignore me. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> I didn't even have to say it. Oh, no, there's an interesting theory just popped into my head. Star Swirl's always messing around with magic. What if he accidentally created discord hmm that would kind of tie into the fan theory that he eventually became discord which i never really followed but him accidentally creating discord or opening up a portal to where discord lives those are kind of interesting mm -hmm. that is definitely a possibility because we still haven't found out where the heck discord came from because we know where nightmare moon came from we kind of know where sombra came from we know where Tarek and his brother came from a far off land, not specifically where, but we know that they at least exist in this plane. They have an origin. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then something that, you know, the fans usually complain about in the toys is that the cutie marks are only on one side, where most often in the animation, whatever side of the character is facing us displays a cutie mark, implying that they are on both sides. And the Gen 1 toys had the cutie mark on both sides. However, the first Daring Do book, the villain has an injury over his cutie mark, which interferes with his ability to perform magic. 
Now, the way the injury was received, it wouldn't be possible for the injury to be on both flanks. So this is supporting evidence that despite the animation showing the cutie marks on whatever side is facing the viewer, the cutie mark may only be on one flank. Hmm, yeah, you notice as well, because they only ever refer to one cutie mark throughout the book. I'm like, but they're on both sides. And I think even the TV show itself, the characters in the show, refer to them being on both sides. So I'm just thinking that's um, showing that the writer didn't quite think it through and kind of just stuck with it to keep it consistent in the book. No, oh, but it is an interesting theory because there are moments in the animation sequences of the show where the cutie marks are missing. Sometimes only for a single frame, sometimes for several frames, which are usually put down to being animation glitches. Hmm. So, do you really have any attachment to this theory or is it just something that kind of like, hmm, this is interesting, I wonder? <laughs> well, it mainly tied back into the toy line because it always seemed so cheap to me that all of the toys only had the mark on one side, even the most accurate ones. When earlier generation toys and the current MLP FIM generation imply that the cutie mark would be on both sides. But the story of the first Daring Do book doesn't work if the cutie mark is that important that an injury to it would affect a pony so badly. Because if he had a cutie mark on both flanks, then he should at least be able to access more magic than that because half of the cutie mark would be completely undamaged. So the main question is whether the show, which usually shows the cutie mark on whichever side is facing the viewer, if that counts as enough canon to override the books because the books are only canon until the show contradicts them. Which is how all the external media for the My Little Pony Friendship and Magic series works. At least that's, he says the current statement from Hasbro themselves is saying that the series is canon, the books are canon, and comics are canon as long as the show itself does not contradict it. Which kind of works for me because there's a couple of stuff in the comics that me and you are both like, nope. <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, as much as I enjoy Gamer Luna, I really don't think she's canon. <laughs> <laughs> so, any theories on Luna in general? Other than, no, most of that's shown that she's the more serious one, even though most of the uh, funner stuff in the Castle of the Two Sisters was her doing. She is definitely portrayed as the more serious sister, which, if you look at the difference between Celestia's duties and Luna's duties, all Celestia has to do is raise the damn sun. Luna has to raise the moon and dreamwalk. Mm. Now, Celestia doesn't fly around during the day looking for subjects that are getting in trouble underneath the sun, but Luna is dreamwalking to help the ponies deal with the nightmare landscape. Mm. So, any wonder she went evil? Not only was she undervalued, she was doing more work. Hmm. Maybe Celestia has other duties we haven't been shown yet. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our random thoughts and theories on My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a friendly comment below and or consider subscribing. If you've enjoyed my art, you can find me on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with stuff going on with the podcast, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He is currently accepting commissions. All links are in the description. You know, one of these times we need to just record an official end card. Velvet, stop licking the couch! <laughs> I'm saving that one for a blooper. <laughs>